Hey guys, welcome to Go Nintendo Nightly for April 26th, 2012. I'm Rami Cowboy. I have the best, worst, and weirdest in Nintendo news for the day. I'm sure a lot of Nintendo fans were looking forward to this day because we had an investors meeting. Sounds boring, but actually brought a lot of great information with it. We'll be talking about some of that tonight. But first, let's get to my weird intro for the day. Mr. Belvedere, a sitcom that never got the credit it deserved, or never got the credit I felt it deserved. Uh, I'm glad I could do it right by showing it in this crappy web show that Mr. Belvedere will never see because he's dead. Anyway, let's talk about the best Nintendo news of the day, shall we? As you've probably guessed, my favorite news of the day came from the investors meeting, which happened late in the day, but it still happened on the 26th, so it counts. Uh, I'm going to go through this by system to make it easier, so we're going to start with the system that isn't even out yet, the Wii U. I think we all know Nintendo well enough that we didn't expect to get any major Wii U information from this investors meeting, but we did get some juicy details that I was surprised to hear. Uh, I'm going to run down the list while you look at some of that beautiful Wii U footage. Wii U will launch this year in Japan, the United States, Europe, and Australia. They'll give more details on that later. Uh, if you're looking for the price or the launch date of the Wii U, you're not going to get that at E3. Anyone that's been following Nintendo for a while now knows that that's how Nintendo operates. They show us some software at E3, then they have another event separately later on to reveal the price point and the launch date. That's how it worked with uh, the 3DS, and that's how it worked for the Wii before. I can actually, it's sad, I can't remember the 3DS event, but I can remember going to the Wii event where they announced Wii Sports was going to have bowling in it, and they also announced the price of the Wii U. So uh, I wasn't too shocked by that. I know some people are upset, but still, Wii U at E3 is going to show us the games, which are the most important part. Uh, w speaking of Wii Sports, Nintendo wants to find a Wii Sports equivalent for the Wii U, but they're not just going to port Wii Sports to the Wii U, so... I don't know if we can take that as an indication of some software they're working on for the Wii U, or just an idea, but having a game that really sells what the system does at launch will be a great idea, so maybe we'll see some of that at E3. On top of all that, Nintendo has admitted that they need to consider social gameplay with the Wii U. How are they going to tackle that? Again, they're not talking about it right now, perhaps they'll discuss it at E3. Finally, Nintendo says that they've been humbled by how the 3DS launch went, and they've learned a very harsh lesson, and that means good things for the Wii U. They say there are going to be rich titles for the Wii U right out the gate instead of making us wait. So, if you weren't too happy with the 3DS software launch, you should be much more excited about what the Wii U is going to have early on in its life. What I consider to be the best of the best of the Wii U news is the fact that Nintendo confirmed that there will be digital titles available for the Wii U when the system launches. Some of these could very well be retail titles that are made available digitally through the Wii U. Uh, what the Wii U shop is going to be called and all that, we don't know, but just the fact that Nintendo is embracing online like this is really big. This is something we've been waiting to see Nintendo do, and now they're finally coming around to it. Of course, while we're really excited about Wii U talk, we don't want to ignore what was talked about with the 3DS, and there was a pretty big bombshell in there as well. Believe it or not, New Super Mario Bros. 2 is going to be not only a retail title for the 3DS, but it's going to be a digital title as well. That means you'll be able to take your pick. Do you want the box copy, or do you want to download it as soon as it comes out? Oddly enough, a few days ago, we posted up a story uh, concerning Nintendo's online press room. In that press room, there was a listing for New Super Mario Bros. 2, and it showed this, the game being both retail and eShop. When I emailed Nintendo about that, they gave me a statement saying it was a mistake. I guess the mistake was they let the news out too early. The other big bit of 3DS news involves digital titles in general and how you'll be able to purchase digital codes to get these games at GameStop or other retailers. So you would go to a retailer and while you were there you could purchase a download code that would let you enter the eShop, put in this code, and get a game. This would work out well for uh, people that want to have the convenience as well as younger kids that could go into a store and tell their parents they want a certain game while they're there. They could talk to the GameStop employee, pay for the code, and then bring Bring the code home with them and let the kid download it that way. That way your kid doesn't have to ask for your credit card and then your kid doesn't have to spend a million dollars on your credit card and you're wondering where all this happened. So we might not want to use it but there are people out there that'll think this is a good idea. 
That's not all the information that came out of the investors meeting. There's all sorts of charts and more interview snippets and a bunch of stuff for you to look at on your own time. So I've put the link in the description if you have a chance to check all of it out. But there's plenty to be excited about. Now let me ruin that excitement by taking you to what I think is the worst story of the day. Oh, how I do not enjoy bringing you this news. I don't want you to think that it's the end-all be-all for this situation, but it's not looking good. If you're a Fire Emblem fan, you might want to look away. At the investors meeting, Nintendo discussed Fire Emblem Awakening, and they said a little something that North American fans aren't going to be happy to hear. I'll read you a snippet specifically. In addition, regarding Fire Emblem Awakening, which was released last week in Japan, its initial sales figures reached the record high in the series since the Game Boy Advance, and we have received a lot of messages from the Club Nintendo members that bought a game from the series after a long interval. Although we have not decided on a plan to release it overseas, we hope to further increase its sales. I know, I know, some of you are thinking, but Rummy Cowboy, you told me that Nintendo purchased FireEmblemAwakening.com, and that means the game's coming here, right? I would think it's an indicator of the game coming here, but it wasn't a confirmation. Now after hearing this, I'm a little bit worried. But, they did buy the domain, so the discussions must still be going on. Who knows, if you keep your fingers crossed tightly enough, maybe we'll hear something at E3. From such highs to such lows in just a matter of minutes, why don't we take it somewhere weird that'll hopefully help us forget the bad stuff we just heard. While I don't endorse what Snoop Dogg is telling you to do, I do have to say, he's got a lovely singing voice. Uh, he's chosen a track from Mutant Muds to rap over, and the song got the approval of Jules Watchem over at Renegade Kid, so if he likes the song, you gotta like it too. Make sure you check out the whole video, cause it's really weird! Yesterday we took a look at the highest rated story on Go Nintendo according to you guys, so I thought we'd take a look at the lowest rated story according to you guys for today, and it involves a bit of Wii U bashing. Dave Neal is a reporter at the technology news site The Inquirer, and he had something to say about the Wii U. He said, It will have to come bursting out of a box with a lot of fireworks if it's going to make an impact. Not that bad, you know, we've heard a lot worse from other analysts, but I think this is the bit that really got you guys. His friend Jeff Ryan, an author, said this about Nintendo. This is just in case if the Wii U fails. Quote, They always have a break glass in case of emergency option. They could always make games for other consoles. If they started to make Zelda games for the PS3 and Mario games for the Xbox, that would keep them in business for another 30 years. Yeah, because, you know, that's what Nintendo has said. They said, well, if our business falls apart, we'll just stop making hardware and we'll make games for other systems. Oh, wait. Nintendo said the exact opposite plenty of times. We've heard Awada say, if our hardware doesn't sell, then we are not going to make video games anymore. We're not bringing our content anywhere else. But, you know, if another president takes over the company someday, they could say, yeah, let's just start making crappy hardware, and then when nobody buys that, we'll bring our games to other platforms, and everybody will be happy, right? Right? This time around, I'll be reading one comment from you guys because it's a rather lengthy one and they got the top spot, so I'll jump in. This comment comes from Mike in Television, and he says, Going third party worked so well for Sega. That is what analysts suggested pre-Wii. They completely ignore the facts that Sony has been awash in corporate red ink for four years and that Microsoft lost money on gaming last year too. It appears to be the standard prejudice against something that is not high-end tech. What do you guys think? Do you agree with Mike in Television? Head into the comment section of this story, which you can find in the description of this video, and let them know. I think that's going to do it for the April 26th edition of Go Nintendo Nightly. I hope you enjoyed the news, I hope you had fun during the investors meeting, and I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say about tomorrow's stories. I'll be keeping an eye out for what you say, and you never know, you could end up in the next episode. I'm going to end tonight's show with a little bit of a line from someone that just recently left us. And for all of us, we'd like to thank you for making us a part of your day for the past several years on the $25,000 pyramid. For now, Dick Clark. So long. They can ask their parents while they're at the store. The parent can ask the... the uh, damn.
There's lots of other great news in our investors meeting wrap up, which you should check out. I've put the link in the description below and there, I don't know. Oh, how I do not enjoy bringing you this news. I don't want you to get all worked up and think that this is so fluffy, so fluffy. In addition, regarding Fire Emblem Awakening, which was released last week in Japan, its initial... <laughs> I look forward to bringing you a few more stories tomorrow, as well as hearing what you guys have to say. Bye, damn.